Well, looks like it's time once again for another exciting episode of Allegedly Grown Man Watching a Kid's Show. I feel like it's been a while since I did anything Disney Channel related. I guess the last videos I made were Prom Pact and Dog with the Block. <laughs> you know, I still can't believe this was a real show. Come on, cheese, give me the ball. I don't have the ball. Moose, have you seen it? No, man, I haven't seen it. You want the ball? You want the ball? I don't want the ball. You finally figured it out. Learning that you don't want the ball is the first step to enlightenment. <laughs> Like, like, what even in the heck was this? But anyway, with the year coming to a close, I wanted to dive back in and finish what I started. I mean, I've done a lot of these already. I think I only have like seven or eight left, which is insane, by the way, but whatever. Stuck in the Middle started in February of 2016. And much like most of the new-ish Disney shows, I know nothing whatsoever about this one at all. So come along, kids. Let's take a walk and check it out. But before that, really quick, guess what? My Skillshare class is up on Skillshare right now. So I made this short little class about how I animate my videos and not just about what software, like what tablet I use or things like that, but like I break down the animation techniques that I use and how I make my character move the way they do, and also how you can use the same techniques and ideas to make your characters do anything, really. Because all animation is based on like the same simple fundamental principles that really anyone can learn if you just try. And here's the thing, with Skillshare being the sponsor of this video, the first 500 people who use my link to sign up get their first month of Skillshare for free. So then you can check out my class, do the whole thing, zero obligation, how about that? And while you're there, you could check out any number of classes Skillshare has, because they have a whole ton of classes on pretty much any topic you could probably think of. You want to learn like literally any music instrument? Self-improvement techniques like journaling or how to get over a creative slump? You want to learn how to make cool stuff for weddings that your friends are definitely going to be jealous of? Well, wouldn't you know, you could learn almost anything on Skillshare. Now, some of you may know, I used to make a lot of video essays on this channel before I started this animation stuff. And I'll tell you right now, true story, I first learned how to do motion graphics and how to use Adobe After Effects from Skillshare. And then I took what I learned from that and applied it to animation, and now here we all are, so. Thanks, Skillshare. So if this interests you, I highly recommend you click my link down below, sign up to Skillshare, and start learning something new today. Okay, back to the show. Big day, Mom. <laughs> Harley, how'd you find me? Mom Jacker, same way I found you yesterday behind the dryer. <sighs> Your inventions are killing me, kid. Yep, that's my mom. <laughs> Wait, wait, no. The, the very beginning of the show, first thing. Yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Squatting on a can of corn in the closet. When you have seven kids and want some peace, this is what happens. I need two more minutes to slug down my coffee. Close the door before the other kids see and start bugging me. Love it, respect it can't do it. You know, people who have like any number of kids, but especially if they have lots of them, they always talk about it like it's some kind of natural disaster. Life was so peaceful and full of bliss, and then one day, seven kids fell out of the sky for no reason. Like, I totally get that it's probably incredibly stressful and all that. Okay, but I'm pretty sure it's kind of sort of partially your fault there, Mom? Like, I assume you were there when it happened. But anyway, so this show is about 13-year-old Harley Diaz, played by a tiny little baby Jenna Ortega. Oh, how'd she get so small? And unlike most Disney Channel shows, this one is a single camera comedy, like Malcolm in the middle. Actually, it's quite literally exactly Malcolm in the middle. I'm the middle kid, so it's hand me down city. I've gotten good at working with what I've got. I'm not bragging. Being creative isn't a choice, it's survival. Enjoy your new travel thumb. So yeah, the show is about Harley Diaz and how she's the middle kid of seven, and therefore, for some reason, she's in charge of taking care of the whole family single-handedly. Because of course, this being a kid's show, the mom is just constantly regretting all her life choices, and the dad has the IQ of a gym sock. Donuts! What is the point of beeping inside the van if it's a safety warning for people outside? It doesn't make sense. Look, sprinkles. Now, the first episode is mainly about how Harley has won this, like, science award thing because, oh yeah, by the way, she's a genius scientist who invents the world's most unnecessary inventions. I've got to Shirley, and I'm not afraid to use her. Say cheese, Shirley. Well, if that isn't just the most horrifying thing. You wake up, it's three in the morning, sitting at the foot of your bed is this thing, just saying your name over and over again. But anyway, like I said, Harley has won the science contest, so she needs to go to the big city park by 11 a.m. to accept her award. However, there being six other kids in the family means that everyone else's plans that day come first, because, you know, they're either older and therefore more special, or younger and therefore they get extra babiness. This is what happens when there are seven kids and you're stuck in the middle. If my family was a week, I'd be Wednesday. Well, that's ironic. If my family was a week, I'd be Wednesday. Not the beginning of the week where everyone's full of energy and hope. I'm not the end of the week where they're relieved and happy. I'm the day people meddle through as best they can. 
hump day. Yeah, you know, this is very true though, okay? As a middle kid of five children myself, I'll tell you, being the middle kid means you gotta figure out how to be independent real quick, because you better believe everyone's gonna forget you exist. Aw, Harles, I'm really sorry we can't make it to the park today. It's hard to take you seriously when you're sucking on a- But obviously, Harley really wants to get that award for whatever it is she invented. So, she has to kind of like bribe and cloak and dagger her way through everyone to get the family out of the house on time. Like her 16-year-old sister, who volunteers at the homeless shelter on weekends. You have to do number one and number two in less than three. I'm literally the only one in this family who consistently looks hot, so maybe don't house the one who's bringing it on the regular. You're going to feed the homeless. The only hot thing they want is lunch. Yeah, I don't know how true that is, Harley. I'm just saying, like, I've seen homeless dudes on the side of the street doing all kinds of who knows what. Or then there's her brother, who she's closest with in the family. You know, maybe he can help her get everyone to the park. I need you to. What's with the walking lint ball? <laughs> it's Jermaine. My friend's on vacation, so I'm watching this hamster. I'm training Jermaine to be my wingman. Girls come for the pet, stay for the song. When it's cold outside, my nipples get a little bit hard. People ask if I'm cold, I look down and then back up and I say, yeah. This part's for you, Jessica. Oreos filled with razor blades. Anyway, so after a bunch of back and forth, they have to take the older sister to the homeless shelter, and then they have to sit through Harley's other older sister's basketball game, and then maybe finally they can spare a couple minutes for Harley. How courteous of them. But just as they're about to leave, we also get to meet their wonderful next door neighbor. I found this in our yard. It's one of the few not already stuck in your rain gutter. Been meaning to clean that out five kids ago. I know you don't have time to read parenting books or parent. But a recent study showed that children raised in chaos end up in jail. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. You know, there's a lot of social commentary in this scene right here. Like, this neighbor, this family, and she's concerned about them having so many kids and, like, ruining the neighborhood. Well, well, well. Who saw that coming? Me, actually. I made it the A topic at our neighborhood meeting. Topics B through Z were also about your family. I'm just saying, for Disney Channel, this is like bizarrely on point commentary, you know what I mean? Also, what is up with those random neighbors who like literally have nothing else to do but show up to your house 7 a.m. and be like, Hi, so garbage cans are supposed to be put out no earlier than 8 a.m. on Thursdays? It's called garbage day, not garbage night before, okay? <laughs> Anyway, so Harley's sister's basketball game starts to run a little bit long, and Harley just kind of accepts the feat and realizes she's never going to get to the park, and because she's the middle kid, therefore no one's going to care about her life ever at all, any, at all. I give up. It's the most important day of my life, and no one even cares. I don't matter in this family, Ethan. I'm Wednesday. <laughs> of course you're Wednesday. <laughs> Mom needs snacks? You're on it. Rachel needs tights. You're on it. Yeah, Harley, your job is to bear the emotional burdens of everyone around you, okay? Your job is to clean up everyone else's messes so they can live their lives, Harley. Duh, what, you thought you were the main character of this family? Anyway, so long story short, Harley's sister's team wins the basketball game because the whole family pitches in behind the scenes to help her out. Well, there's nothing in the rule book that says a kid on a rope can't play basketball. And then they hurry over to the park, but it's too late. And Harley doesn't get to pick up her award after all. So thanks for nothing, family. Sure glad she can make your lives all better. I'm so sorry we missed the award, sweetie. But Dad and I couldn't be prouder. What an amazing idea you thought of. This isn't just a table. I designed it for big families like ours. Whoa, look at it spinning around. Yeah, also, Harley's big invention is a sushi conveyor belt table. It's like the other night, Kelsey and I were eating cereal for dinner because we're mature adults. And she said, you know, someone should really try making a savory cereal one of these days. Congrats, honey, you just reinvented soup. And so the episode ends with the family all sitting together at Harley's table and they eat donuts they found in the trash. No joke here, that's just what happens. So this show went on for three seasons, from 2016 to 2018, and the last episode of the show is Harley's quinceanera, when she finally turns 15 and therefore she's a full adult now. Like, remember back when we were all 15, 16, and like, you thought you were so smart and sophisticated and grown up because like, you get Starbucks before school. And like, now I'm in my 30s and I just lay in bed sometimes like, I don't know nothing about anything. Anyway, so Harley has this 
this old bucket list she made when she was younger about all the things she wanted to do before she became an adult. Look what I found in the basement when I was collecting things for your collage. Harley's bucket list. Ah, oh, you misspelled bucket. That's because it's not a bucket list. It's a buck kid list. Stuff you want to accomplish while you're still a kid. All right, let's see what's on this list of things I wanted to do before I hit 25 and all the joy evaporates from my life. Make a giant pancake. Dance on a cloud. Get kidnapped by BTS. Baby trap Harry Styles. Demolish capitalism. There's only a handful left. Hmm, it's a shame you didn't finish, considering you're retiring your childhood today. Oh my gosh, Georgie, you're right. This is my last chance. If I hurry up, I can finish the list before my kinsei. And so the episode is mostly about the family trying to prepare for her party, but of course everything goes horribly awry and they get the wrong dress and they mess up the decorations. And while this is all going on, Harley herself is trying to finish her list, like make a giant pancake or a giant ball pit or a gelatin slip and slide. Next up, gelatin slip and slide. I love how they can't say jello, but they can say slip and slide for some reason. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be jello, because when she said gelatin slip and slide, I just assumed it was gonna be a giant pile of horse feet. I can't get it off. I ruined my kitchen. That's right, so even without her family messing up all their jobs anyway, Harley ends up staining almost her entire body with like jello or whatever, and she can't wipe it off no matter what she does. Oh, if only someone would show up at the last minute and save the day or something. Rachel's here! Rachel, you said you couldn't be here. Change my mind. I told Christian Lamon he could fire me, but I'm going. Turns out he likes a girl with two. Her. Oh yeah, also in season three, the oldest sister goes off to college in Paris and interns at like a fashion related something or other. But of course, for the last episode, she comes home to surprise everyone and get the quinceanera back on track. I love your enthusiasm, but we only have an hour and I look like pie filling. Soaking in a tub full of fresh lemon juice and vinegar will remove any stain. You think I don't know how to remove a stain? Yeah, guys, trust me, okay? You don't go through high school with a face like this and not know how to get stains out, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Dad? And so Harley goes off to bathe in lemon juice and vinegar for a while, and everyone gets the party all set up, and what do you know, everything works out in the end, Harley gets the right dress, and all her friends and family are there, and it's one heck of a time. <laughs> hey. hey! You smell like lemonade. <laughs> yeah, long story. I could charge 25 cents for a cup of my sweat. Yeah, I'm not touching this one. Also, in season three, she gets this boyfriend, Aiden, who ends up moving to Tokyo to live with his, like, business mogul, CEO, rich guy dad. But of course, he also comes back at the end, because why not? Turns out, despite all my preparation, my kinsei was still full of surprises. Aiden, I thought you left. My father has a million frequent flyer miles, and your sisters are very convincing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, I've listened to every Olivia Rodrigo and Sabrina Carpenter song, okay? Trust me, Harley, this guy ain't worth it! But all the same, that's pretty much the beginning and end of the Disney Channel original series, Stuck in the Middle. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please watch another one, because that's how the algorithm works. So click on this one that's being recommended to you right now, right here on the screen. It actually helps a lot if you do that, because like that's how YouTube knows that my videos are worth caring about. Also, if you have any movies or TV shows you'd like to recommend, send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com, and I'll put them on my absurdly long list of movies that I need to get to at some point. Anyway, hope I made your day a little bit better, and I'll see you all next time.